Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Going over my cheat sheet for today's only main slate for today on DraftKings. Before we continue though, if you could leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, if you please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at chrispinnell 16 And if you'd like access to my entire OB sheet and my Slack chat, link is in the description below for my Patreon. I also am going to start posting an updated video around lock because a lot of things change in the next, oh, I don't know, 20 hours. So... <laughs> You can do a lot of updates on there, and then I do, you know, cash game, pitching options, GBP, home run calls, all that is available. Link in the description below in my Patreon. All right, anyway, let's get into today's cheat sheet. So, a pitcher, we have Shane Bieber at 11,500 versus the White Sox, Trevor Williams at 6,600 versus the Marlins, and Michael Waka at 5,900 versus San Fran. So, let's take a quick dive into the pitching sheet to see why I like the guys that I like. So, up top, we have Shane Bieber, and let me sort this by salary, because it's not sorted by salary at the moment. Now it is. So, uh, Bieber's been amazing this season. 3.17 XFIP, 31% strikeout rate, 5% walk rate. Hard contact rate is at 43%, which is not the best, but nonetheless, he has been excellent this season to both sides of the plate. And if you look at his matchup, I've said it a million times this season, you, probably, you guys probably already get it by now, but... The White Sox suck versus right-handed pitching. 26.3% strikeout rate, 141 team ISO, 293 team MOBA, 81 WRC+. Plus. Fantastic matchup for him. Mike Clevenger was having a great game. Got the wind blown by uh, Cookie Carrasco, unfortunately. But it's still awesome that Cookie's actually pitching, so I'm not even going to... It's all right. <laughs> it happens. Uh, but yeah, Shane Bieber. Uh, Clevenger had a great day, racking up the strikeouts. Would have had about 30 points if he got that win, but I think he saw 25, which was still pretty respectable. So don't mind going with Shane Bieber as your SP1. I actually think you're going to have to do that. And then we're going to drop all the way down to Trevor Williams at 6,600. Now, is, is his numbers great? Absolutely not. They're not. 5.17 XFIP, 17% strikeout rate. I like the hard contact percentage at only 33%. That's not too bad, but everything else is pretty gross. The only thing I like here is the matchup versus Miami. And the guys have probably heard me say this a million times, but Miami sucks versus righties. They have a 25, uh, 20, 25.1% strikeout rate, 124 team ISO, 283 team Mobile, 75 WRC+. Plus. It's a fantastic matchup for Williams. He's only 6,600. I don't mind him as SP2, but if you want a cheaper SP2, Michael Waka is only 5,900 going up against the San Francisco Giants, who Jack Flaherty just had a really good game versus them, and Waka has not been terrible the past few games. I think he's a little uh, underpriced here. I would He's probably more of a 6,600, 7K pitcher, to be honest, on this kind of slate, but at 5,900, that's just excellent value. His numbers are not that impressive, so let's just not even... Uh, list them off but the matchup versus san francisco while it's not really a strikeout happy matchup it's a soft matchup nonetheless because they don't have a lot of power versus righties 22 and a half percent strikeout rate 169 team iso 304 team will but 87 wrc plus i think he is just fine if he gets you 10 points you're extremely happy i love these kind of slates when there's a really good spend up option and then there's really uh good there's like a really good spend down option like like yesterday clevenger and mike montgomery now these guys aren't absolutely as free as Mike Montgomery, but they're still pretty cheap and they're in doable matchups. So like those kind of slates a lot. Now let's go to the bats. So catcher, we have Mitch Garver facing a lefty. Now I guess he has a sore jaw. Hopefully that's so. Hopefully he should be able to play tomorrow. I'd imagine that wouldn't really stop him from playing for too long. But he's crushed lefties this season. Erod's not a bad pitcher by any means, but Boston's a good park for hitting. Mitch Garver is great versus lefties. And then we have Valoria. I believe I'm saying that right. He's only 2,900 versus Edwin Jackson. Gets his platoon, gets the platoon advantage there. Now, Edwin Jackson has actually been a trash can to righties. Like, he has been awful. But that doesn't mean he's any good versus lefties either, even though he's been a little bit better versus them. Uh, I, like, I like the Royals. A lot of them are pretty cheap, and including Valoria. So don't mind him at catcher. Probably going to be chalky as long as he's in the lineup. And then Max Stassi, Stacy. I don't know if he's going to be in the lineup. Again, this is like 20 hours before lock tomorrow. I'm just guessing. And he's min price. So I, I honestly, I expect him to get a zero. If he gets anything above that, I am happy with it. At first base, Cody Bellinger, 5,600 versus Antonio Sensatella. Sensatella's got a high ground ball rate to righties, but a nice uh, 
it dramatically switches to lefties where the fly ball rate increases, ISO increases, strikeout rate decre uh, decreases. Like myself, some Cody Bellinger tomorrow if you can afford them. And all the Dodgers lefties are in play. Carlos Santana, 5200 versus Yvonne Nova, who really struggles with lefties. Now, he has not been absolutely terrible this season, but still the lefties can get to him. And Jake Bowers at 3,700 versus Nova. Like I've said before, or right before this, he struggles with lefties. Bowers was actually batting fifth today, but so if he does that again, I think that's a tremendous value at 3,700 for one of my favorite stacks. Second base, we have Whit Merrifield at 4,700 versus Edwin Jackson. Just He's a really safe play. He's usually going to get on base. He's got stolen base upside. I mean, not like it's not like it's like the best stolen base upside matchup, but still. He's got some speed, and he's got power, too. And I believe last time he played Edwin Jackson, he started off with the inside-the-park home run, if I'm correct. So, not expecting that again, but maybe he can just get a regular home run. Then we have Gavin Lux at 3,700. He was leading off tonight. He ended up being chalk. I plugged him in. I think he got a single. Nothing special. But if he's leading off again, I love that as a lefty versus Sensatella. Then Kipnis, I know he's been out of the lineup, but it sounds like he might be trending towards being back in the lineup today. And if he is, 4,200 versus Nova. Don't mind that at all. Then at third base, we have Hunter Dozier at 4,600. He has been crushing righties this season. And what does Edwin Jackson do? He gets crushed by righties. So he makes a lot of sense to me. I like that Royal stack. And then Jake Lamb, 3,100. If you just need a cheapy, Paddock does allow a good amount of hard contact, especially to the lefties. So at 3,100, he's basically free. So I think Jake Lamb's in play. And then Nolan Arenado at 4,800 versus uh, Ryu. Now, Ryu has not been as sharp as he has been all season the past few games. So maybe we can get a cheap home run from Arenado, who's normally priced in the 5K range, even though that's usually in course. I know he has. I think he has good history versus Rio, but again, that's mostly in course field, so I throw that out the window. I mostly throw out history out the window. We a lot of times anyway. And shortstop Frankie Lindor, 5500 versus Nova. He I believe he got the leadoff home run today, right? I think they said that was his 18th in his career, but I could see it happen again. Even if it doesn't I'll get a leadoff home run, he should probably have a good game versus Ivan Nova, who struggles with lefties. Corey Seager, 4,300. If he's batting second, that is awesome versus Sensatella as a lefty. Then Mondesi at 5,200 versus Edwin Jackson. He's back in the lineup. I don't know if you guys knew that, but he is. I mean, you should know that if you've been playing MLB every day, but if you haven't, he's back. He was on the IL for a bit, but I uh, like him versus Edwin Jackson. He's just really expensive. I think he's the high. I think he's the most expensive Rose bat, but he's got he's got some decent power. Now he's not like a big hitter or anything, but he can he can put one over the wall occasionally, and he's got tons of speed, so he can always leg out uh, doubles and triples. And then we have Corey. I don't know. I was about to say Corey Seager. High end outfield. We have Cody Bellinger. We already talked about him. Then Nelson Cruz, 5400 versus a lefty. It's a rule in DFS if he's facing a lefty, he has to be on your radar, and he is. And Mike Trout at 5K. So I don't get, I don't get it. He was 4,900 last night facing Mike Fires, who he's had success against in his career. Yeah, I'm not saying it's just because it was a BVP play. He's Mike Trout crushes righties. Mike Fires has always been a little bit reverse splitsy. It makes sense that Mike Trout would be good against Mike Fires. And he got first pitch home run last night. I cannot believe he was only 34% owning cash and 18% in tournaments. He was 4,900. I don't understand it. This is a tougher matchup versus Roark, who is pretty tough on righties, but still, Mike Trout at 5,000, I'll pretty much take that all day, and I'll have him as a core play, because the matchup's not as nice as some of the other guys priced around him, but still, Mike Trout at that price is still, that's a, it's a value, believe it or not. And then in the mid-range outfield, Jorge Soler at 4,700, he's a core play for me, this whole group is facing Edwin Jackson. Uh, Soler has crushed righties this season, he's been good versus lefties too, but murdering righties, he homered last night, I feel like he homered the past two days. I know he's homered multiple days, I think, recently, if I'm correct. My mind's been jumping. I've been doing NASCAR and NFL, but I'm still watching all the baseball. So I love Soler. I should, I mean, I'd be surprised if he doesn't homer in this matchup. Uh, Whit Merrifield we already talked about. Hunter Dozier we already talked about. And some value guys. Josh Rojas is, if you hear that jingle, and that's my dog. Uh, the value I feel, Josh Rojas is not 4,700. I don't know why it's saying he's 4,700. I checked the formula, and I don't understand it. I'll fix it, but he's 2,700, So, and he's not facing Edwin Jackson, so something's messed up here, and I don't know what it is. So let's just let's delete that. He has the same matchup as Jacob Lamb, though. So 
but he's cheap enough. I don't mind. I mean, he, he's been hitting high in the order. I think he hit second last uh, or tonight, last night, whenever you're watching this video. That's pretty good value for me. Then Greg Allen at 3,700 if he's betting second again versus Nova, like the lefties versus Novas. Uh, Novas. Like the lefties versus Nova. So he makes some sense to me in Indian stacks. And he's got some speed too. And then the core plays and top stacks are, for me, Shane Bieber, 11,500. Then pair him with a cheap guy and load up on some bets. Uh, Lux, if he is leading off at 3,700. And then Soler at 4,700. I think that's one of the top home run spots of the entire slate. And then top stacks for me are the Indians, the Royals, and the Dodgers, specifically the lefties. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for the video. Remember to leave a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, and I really appreciate it. Check out all the NFL content I've been putting out. i got a ton of videos out. I recommend watching them before Sunday. And I'll see you guys in the next video, and have a fantastic Wednesday.